Honestly, if you want to feel like you're in Thailand, turn the heat up, play Shape of You three or four times, you're there. We're talking about practice? Huh? So are we talking about practice? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just finished up my uh, first team jiu-jitsu practice at Tiger. It was a ton of fun, honestly. Um, I was really excited because I'm a jiu-jitsu guy, so I know I can pretty much go anywhere and roll and hold my own and have fun with it. You know, I don't have to worry about, like, dying on the mat, which is always nice, just because um, I'm a brown belt. I've been doing it for 10 years. I'll be all right. Um, but the practice was a ton of fun. It was simple enough. You know, we warmed up for 15, 20 minutes, and then we went right into live wrestling, which I like a lot for, like, an MMA-style jiu-jitsu practice. We did a lot of positional stuff, just starting in, in back mount or side control or in guard. And I liked the, the criteria for winning that, you know, you either had, if you were on your back, just getting up was a win. Because that's very MMA realistic, and a lot of places don't do that. Um, it's different to play guard when standing up is an option for success. And it, it honestly opens it up a lot if you're the bottom guy. If you can feint standing up, you can set up submissions and vice versa, which was a lot of fun. And then, you know, we finished in back mount, which is my area, that's what I'm good at. So it was a ton of fun to test myself against different people there, both with them on my back and on their back. And then lastly, I think the thing that was cool is just because I've been training at Alpha Male so long, you know, I know all the guys and they all know me. I'm a guy who, you know, survives on tricks and traps and stuff. And all the guys back home know all the little cheap things I do to gain an edge and catch a choke. Whereas here, you know, even if they know the move, they don't know that I'm going to be looking for it. Um, so it gives me that little bit of advantage and fun to be able to test my tricks on people who don't know they're coming for once. Because um, otherwise, the only time I get to do that is in fights themselves, which is why it's a lot easier to choke guys out in a fight than my teammates who I've done all my tricky arm trap stuff to before. Uh, so it was fun from that perspective, too. Even my little defenses, I did a uh, front when they have the back, you cross the arm over and catch the head while they have your back and it looks super stupid but it works really well and I managed to do that again partially because the guys out here don't know that that's one of my go-to tricks. Uh, so it, it was a lot of fun. Jiu-Jitsu was awesome. Uh, practice was great. No complaints at all. Um, it's definitely a really high level room. Uh, I train at a high level room. This is also a high level room. There are little differences, like uh, I'm able to catch the neck more often from the guillotine, even if I don't finish the submission than an alpha male, just because everyone at alpha male tries to guillotine each other, like non-stop, 99% of the time. But then on the other hand, I went with a few guys that I could tell were like, I don't, I don't want to be too generic, but they were Eastern European wrestler types, and they had awesome top pressure, and that's the kind of thing you only get from elite rooms and elite teams. Uh, the guys who can put their hips in and you're like, wow, you weigh three times what you weigh. That's how it feels right now. Um, so it's always fun to deal with that because, you know, realistically, the longer you fight, you're going to run into someone with that type of ability. And, you know, we have that at Alpha Male. We have the elite wrestlers, but it is a different style. A lot of our guys are, uh, you know, like uh, American collegiate wrestlers. And there is, it's hard to put into words, but there is a difference between that their, their hip pressure from top position I think they're a little more natural uh, in Russia and, and Eastern Europe with that kind of top pressure from within guard than a lot of our collegiate wrestlers are. It's just different positioning. And I don't know why that is, but it's something I find pretty often when I train from guys from that region that they're all really good at that. Um, so it's, it's a fun test, you know? And it's what you want when you visit somewhere. Did I tell you Shape of You was the most popular song in Thailand? Where did I tell you fucking Shape of You was the most popular song? I believe you. Damn it, I didn't get the capture. There's still Shape of You playing. Everywhere. I want this documented. It's so difficult to capture just how much food they have at these places. Like, you'll just see rows and rows of fish and food and stuff. And then it gets even crazier when you remember that like there's like 15 of these night markets in Phuket alone that all do this like every night. It's wild. I don't know what that is. That's a lot.
shrimp bomb. All right, can I try one? Oh, thank you. Here you go. Cup, coon, cup. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go with the one I feel is probably less likely to be good, which is the fried shrimp bomb. So I'm gonna take it out, but otherwise it's really hot. Oh yeah, that was good. Good review. Fried sauce, good. So what we have here is a cheese ball, and honestly, it sounds good, it should be good, but cheese in Asia can be a little odd. So we will find out what type of cheese it is and other information by biting into it. You know, I promised that I would figure things out by biting that, and I figured out almost nothing. It tastes more like, like a mashed potato fried ball than a cheese ball. There might be. I mean, it's good. Something fried with sauce. So we got here some fried banana, uh, 25 baht, which is just under one US dollar. Uh, it's a good deal of fried banana. And one of the things you'll find uh, in Southeast Asia in general is that fruit is king and banana is one of those members of royalty. Uh, banana, mango, pineapple, they're everywhere. They're all good. And again, deep fried sauce, probably gonna be fire. It's deep fried and has a sauce, so I don't know what you guys want from me. It's a really good banana. All right, so my man Case, my cameraman, being a vegan, saw a potato, got very excited for reasons I'm not entirely sure of. But uh, I'm gonna try it, because I'm gonna try everything that anyone eats on this uh, little journey through this market. So this one, I read the little guide, is sweet potato and milk. I don't know, a lot of times uh, in Southeast Asia, milk means sweetened condensed milk, which means a shit ton of sugar. Um, so we'll find out if this is one of those cases or if it's evaporated milk or something like that, maybe coconut milk. Um, I'll find out. tastes about like it looks. It's a deep fried sweet potato ball. I happen to love sweet potatoes, so it's very good. Um, nothing crazy, but this whole handful of different flavors is I think 20 baht, which is 66 cents US. Um, this is enough, it's a pretty decent snack halfway to a meal, uh, honestly. I'm not gonna eat it all. <laughs> what do I all have? right, so I just ordered rainbow Thai glutinous rice balls. Perfect, thank you. Uh, without the egg, because I'm poor and I don't want egg in my dessert. Um, but I believe it'll be some kind of gelatinous rice ball in a coconut milk broth. Um, this kind of stuff's pretty popular as a dessert in Southeast Asia. Um, it's not my favorite, but we'll see how this one goes. Top. Okay, so first surprise is that it's warm. It's warm? It's very hot. I did not expect that. But the coconut milk broth is very much, uh, they sweetened it. It's very much like what you would get in the States on top of a mango sticky rice. Whereas here, when you order a mango sticky rice, a lot of times it's just straight coconut milk unsweetened. Um, but this is very sweet. Um, not bad at all. Uh, let me get some of the more colorful bits. But yeah, and all that's just rice, so it's pretty flavorless. All that flavor comes from the liquid, that coconut milk and sugar broth. So I think uh, they take like rice paper and then top it with egg white. And then depending on what the topping is on top of the egg white, it's either sweet or savory. Uh, I believe the yellow is like a sweetened egg yolk, which I like a lot versus the orange is uh, like a shrimpier flavor, which is very interesting. One of the chili chicken. Yes. And one of the uh, vanilla cream. Let's dig into this. We've got what looks like an end piece of bread stuffed with chicken. I see some chili sauce and 
breadcrumbs, maybe, on top. I don't know what the best way to eat this is. That was mostly bread, not much else. I gotta dig deeper. And I don't think I ate it the right way. So after that bread sandwich of bread and more bread, um, I needed something to drink. Also, the, the brown chicken powder fluff that was on top made my mouth very dry, which is why we're returning to Old Faithful Thai tea. I'll have two to three of these a day, most of the time. I think 25 baht, just under a dollar. Lovely.